What is torture? According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, torture is the act of causing severe physical pain as a form of punishment or as a way to force someone to do or say something or something that causes mental or physical suffering. Torture has been used since the dawn of civilization in rituals or religious practices or as a consequence of war. The first use of torture was officially documented in 530 AD in the account of Roman jurists describing torture as a way of acquiring the highest form of truth. In history, torture was used by those with more power, or in the case of war, used by the victors. The use of torture has carried on to modern times, and the methods have become more or less brutal, depending on the region or the context. A trend of historical torture is that it was punitive and the end goal was death. A type of torture that was used in history that can be seen as punishmental is rack torture that was used in medieval times. The rack was a contraption that was designed to dislocate every joint in a victim's body. This was excruciatingly painful, and often the rack was turned in order to rip off the limbs of the victim's body. In the Elizabethan era, rat torture was used in the Tower of London. Rats were placed in a bottom open box on the victim's stomach. Heat was applied to the box, and the rats would try to escape from the heat by eating through the victim's body. Overall, torture in history was more punitive and served to punish the victims for actions that they had already committed, by killing them or making sure that they would never be able to recover from the pain that they had been subjected to. Modern examples of torture are seen as being more psychological rather than physical. This is because the historical methods of torture were meant to kill the individual, unlike today's era, where the objective is to make you suffer for the longest time period possible without killing you. For example, in North Korea, individuals were propped up in the pigeon torture position. Their chests were beaten until they would vomit blood. In addition, the prisoners were subjected to the motorcycle position or airplane position, where they would stand in an uncomfortable position with their arms extended, sometimes carrying heavy objects. They were forced to hold this position for hours until their bodies would collapse. When the prisoners were not being interrogated, they would be forced to sit in their cell in a kneeling position with their hands around their neck, sometimes even with their heads pressed against the ground. At night, people had to take turns sleeping and laying down while others waited for their turn. This led to extreme exhaustion for the prisoners. Another example of modern day torture would be the white room. Individuals would be placed in a white room wearing nothing but white clothes, receiving white food on a white plate. Because of the sensory deprivation, the person starts to hallucinate, eventually driving the person mad. Victims often begin to experience auditory and visual hallucinations within the first 15 minutes. Another example of modern day torture would be waterboarding. Waterboarding is when the prisoner is pinned against a flat board with their legs extended. The individual's face would be covered with a cloth. Water would be poured on the cloth for a minute at a time, and in between each minute, the victim would be allowed a few breaths before the next session. This gives the victim a sense of drowning without the possibility of dying. This causes post-traumatic stress, a fear of water, and possibly organ failure due to the lack of oxygen. Modern torture is more preventative rather than historical torture, which was more punitive. By using more psychological forms of torture, the victim is affected on multiple levels which are long-lasting but do not result in the death of the victim. Torture is used in modern times to evoke information from the victim in order to prevent future issues and crises. Torture is used in the novel 1984 by George Orwell when the protagonist Winston Smith had been caught for committing several crimes against the totalitarian and communist party. Both physical and psychological torture were used on Winston by the character O'Brien to get information on the crimes he had committed and to make sure that he would not commit them again. Another example of torture in 1984 is the routine, the painful torture. It is basically the dislocation of joints in the body. In this scene, Smith is subjected to routine, pain-inducing torture first. The excerpt quotes, 
Without any warning except a slight movement of O'Brien's hand, a wave of pain flooded his body. It was a frightening pain because he could not see what was happening, and he had the feeling that some mortal injury was being done to him. He did not know whether the thing was really happening or whether the effect was electrically produced, but his body was being wrenched out of shape. The joints were slowly being torn apart. Although the pain had brought out the sweat on his forehead, the worst of all was the fear that his backbone was about to snap. He set his teeth and breathed harder through his nose, trying to keep silent as long as possible. You are afraid, said O'Brien, watching his face, that in another moment something is going to break. Your special fear is that it will be your backbone. You have a vivid mental picture of the vertebrae snapping apart and the spinal fluid dripping out of them. That is what you are thinking, is it not, Winston? In this scene, an electroconvulsive shock has been used. This is done by two soft pads being placed against his temples and being electrocuted. In this scene, O'Brien says this is a pain-free procedure and Smith goes along with it. Smith experiences what feels like an explosion, a blinding flash of light, and he felt, and despite his prone position, feels as if he has been knocked flat onto his back. The excerpt quotes, Just now, I held up the fingers of my hand to you. You saw five fingers. Do you remember that? Yes, O'Brien held up the fingers of his left hand with the thumb concealed. There are five fingers there. Do you see five fingers? Yes, and he did see them, for a fleeting instant. Before the scenery of his mind changed, he saw five fingers, and there was no deformity. Then everything was normal again, and the old fear, the hatred, and the bewilderment came crowding back again. But there had been a moment when two and two couldn't have been three as easily as five, if that was what was needed. O'Brien then goes on to say, You see now that it is at any rate possible. Hello. The use of torture in the novel 1984 by George Orwell shows torture as both a method of prevention and punishment. Here we can see a link in between historic and modern torture. We see the major theme of the evolution of torture. We can see that the ritual physical torture is used in the novel to show the punitive aspect of torture to hurt Winston. However, psychological torture is used to make sure that the torture was not meant to kill Winston, but to traumatize him and affect him on a level so high that he would be completely transformed. This is effective in showing the evolution of torture and it shows the effects of both types of torture. Take into consideration the Western audience in the 1950s, post-World War II. The world had seen torture being used to interrogate enemies as well as prevent ideologies like fascism or communism. If it had been written in an earlier time, the theme of torture would have been seen as a source of revenge or the avenging for land or lives lost. The threat of communism was higher on this period. The text would have been less negative to communist ideologies in an earlier time. In a later time, perhaps during the Cold War, the tone towards communism would have been even more ruthless and shown the torture as more barbaric or evil. If the audience was for a continent that was close to or was a communist regime, such as Cuba, China, Vietnam, or the Soviet Union, the novel would have been totally used as propaganda and shown the torture as what would happen to defiers of the state. Throughout the video, we have explored historical and modern-day examples of torture in order to emphasize the theme of the evolution of torture. This connects to the book 1984 by George Orwell, as it shares similar themes with the topic torture. Torture has been happening, and it still continues to happen. It has gone through a major evolution. But what will the next evolution of torture be?